Yeah, someone's got it. Oh. Wow, okay. Welcome back everybody and or anybody, or if you're new here, my name is Christian, this is Make Time for Fishing. I am out here the next day after my last video. It is still very windy, so I apologize in advance for all that wind noise I'm sure you're hearing right now. Hopefully the wind's gonna lay down a little bit as the morning goes on. I'm gonna see if I can get around the wind or at least work around the wind with my tactics. Going to see if I can uh, use a slip float rig to start out see what that gets me and uh, kind of go from there. I really like the idea of the slip float rig, but I've had issues with it in the past because I kind of jerry rig it, but I actually got real bobber stops today and I'm using egg waste set of split shots. So I should be in business here. But anyway, let's get to fishing. I uh, hope you all enjoy the video. If you do and you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. I post videos like this every week, but um, without further ado, let's get to the action. Thanks for watching. So I've done another video showing how to rig this up before, but this is my slip float rig. Uh, it's a little different than last time, so I'll run you through it real quick. This is a size 1 mosquito hook uh, with 20 pound fluorocarbon leader, about a foot of it. Change that as needed. This is a quarter ounce uh, egg weight, which is going to basically be a suspended Carolina rig under this uh, bobber here. And way up here I have a bobber stop, which is adjustable of course, so I can set the depth. That's what people like about this rig. And I'm going to be fishing that with some fiddler crabs. Let's go ahead and uh, set our initial depth by sliding this little bobber stop this is a store bought bobber stop in the past i've uh, opted to tie my own which just entails tying a little uni knot and definitely first time using uh, this rig in a while let's see if we can find some fish it's a couple feet deep over here we'll see um we'll have to see if this rig is going to be deep enough right now basically you want it just off the bottom i think it's a little deeper there than i was thinking there we go. That's what's cool about this rig. Once you tie it up, it's kind of just testing out different depths and different areas until the bobber goes under. And who doesn't love watching a bobber go under? Oh. 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 Went under there for a second. Come on. Someone was messing with it. What's cool about this is you're able to adjust the weight for the bobber that you're using. For me, I know that the weight isn't heavy enough to pull the bobber under on its own. So if the bobber goes under, like there, I actually just saw it moving. It wasn't under. Nice, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> to start out, the bobber rig. <laughs> so there, I saw it go under a couple of times and uh, I didn't hook up and then I just saw it slowly moving up against the wind. <laughs> and sure enough, it was this guy. That's a, that's a good one to start out. Nice. Uh, that was cool though. I love, love bobber fishing when I can for any species. It's just fun. All right, let's get a look at this guy really quickly. We'll get him back. Thank you, buddy, you're a keeper. That's probably a 14, 14 and a half. Not a big keeper, but he's a very safe bet as a keeper. Come on. Yeah, someone's got it. So that one, once again, didn't go under. I think this might be a red. No, it's just a good sheep. Wow. Jeez. <laughs> okay, so I don't know if I had the uh, bobber stopper too deep, but um, he didn't pull it under. I just saw a couple of small taps, so I lifted up to see and uh, Wow, I barely have him hooked too. He's hooked on the outside of the nose, I think. I, I don't think he's hooked very well, so might lose him here. Yeah, I hooked him <laughs> in the nose. 
What the heck? So that's a good fish. All right, I'm thinking that guy's about 18, but look at how I hooked him. I hooked him right in the nostril. I, I don't think I've ever hooked one there. Uh, good fish, starting out early with the uh, slip float rig. That was cool. Um, interesting bites on both of them, but the bobber helped me see them. Thank you, buddy, let's get you back. Off to an early and excellent start with the uh, slip float rig here. It's working well, all rigged up correctly. Who would have thought? I need to keep an eye on my bobber because, uh, oh, yep, just got tapped. Oh. Ooh. Somebody had it, though. Oh, yeah, there we go. It's another pretty decent one. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. But that was the first one where it actually went under a little bit. Could probably be getting away with a heavier weight, but I didn't want to use too heavy of a weight and have the uh, bobber get pulled under it. Defeats the purpose. There we go. <laughs> Another little one, but man, it is really fun. <laughs> I'm willing to bet if I can keep the depth dialed in, this is gonna help me a lot with uh, seeing the bites today because of all this wind. Let's see if anybody's home over here. Oh yeah, someone just hit it. Well, that was a fluke. I didn't know there was a fish on. <laughs> I accidentally set it too deep so the bobber wasn't even standing up and down <laughs> and uh, this guy was on it already. That's funny. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so that guy was just running with it. I've had a couple do that. All right, little guy. Hopefully we start finding the big ones again, but I'm not upset about just having a lot of action. This is fun. Wow, okay. Um, <laughs> well, this guy didn't pull it under. He was just sitting there with it. And <laughs> that's a big one. <laughs> that's a big one. That's a good one. Yeah. Let's bring him this way. I knew there had to be someone. Someone good under this dock. Oh, wow. He's digging too. <laughs> Man, <laughs> look at that guy. That's pretty sweet. Disappointing he didn't pull the bobber under. I feel like that would have been a cool take, but this guy's probably almost 20. Uh, nah, I'll give him, well, I'll have to get a measure on him. I'm not sure. That was funny, he didn't even move it. It just, I noticed it stopped moving and so I picked it up to move it because I assumed it was stuck on the bottom. And uh, no, it was this guy. Uh, I don't know if he's 20. I'll measure him, but I'm thinking he's closer to 19, maybe even 18 and a half. He's fat though. Not quite, yeah, I think he's really close. He went 49 centimeters. Don't remember what that is in inches, but I believe about 50 was uh, 20 inches, so. Still a big fish, big fish of the day so far. Hopefully there's plenty more to come. I've only been out here for uh, about an hour. Quick action. <laughs> Hopefully I get some more dramatic bobber takedowns though. That's what it's all about. <laughs> all right, let's check that depth. See how deep I need it to be. Five and a half feet or so. Looks about right.
Oh. 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 Oh no. It's a good one. It's a really good one. Oh, he's around something. Come on. Nice. Nice. <laughs> this is a good fish. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, where's my net? Where's my net? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish. That one's got to be 20. <laughs> oh, man. This is a good fish. That's probably a 20. That's a, that's a good fish. Once again, he didn't pull it under. He was just swimming with it. It looked like my bobber got hung up, but I fished this dock enough times I didn't think there should be a snag there. Let's get a quick measure and we'll get him back. This guy went 52 centimeters, which I believe means uh, he's my first over 20 today. Let's get him released nice and safely. If you guys don't know about the release over 20 initiative, essentially what it is is as fish age, uh, they grow more slowly. So a big fish like an over 20 sheep's head is very old compared to say an 18 inch sheep's head. But I'll talk about that more in a minute once I get this fish back. There he goes. So if you're not familiar with Release Over 20, essentially it's a foundation or an organization that promotes self-imposing upper limits on fish in areas where there isn't necessarily an upper limit. The main argument is about the fact that those big fish are pretty old and they're also the main breeders. And anecdotally, they don't taste very good. So there's not much for reason to keep them in my opinion. But so for me, over 20 inch sheep's head, some things I've always let go, but they recently added it. Uh, they started out with flounder and trout. It's basically meant to promote responsible fishing. Uh, they're not saying put them all back. They're just saying put the biggest ones back because it promotes a healthy fishery in the long run. You want to keep catching them, you got to put them back, at least sometimes. But anyway, uh, let's get back in there and see if we can find some more big ones to put back. Just went under, probably already got stolen. Somebody was chewing on it. I caught a big one under here before, so there could be another. Oh, yep, yep, they're getting it very quickly, too. Nice. That's not small. That's not small. Oh. It's not big, though. Oh. You get snagged? No? You're just fighting up a weight class. Want to get a few more fish before I consider potentially switching my uh, rig here. Possibly doing some free lining. Since we're coming up on low, possibly already in slack. I haven't used a knocker rig in forever. I'm gonna try out a tiny one that's an eighth of an ounce egg weight. Smallest I ever used for this. And uh, yeah, this was kind of the first method that really got me uh, into sheep's head fishing uh, when I was first trying to learn. Oh, didn't realize I was getting bit. Not bad. Probably 13 and a half, something like that. It's been slow. So I'm happy to see him. Okay. Haven't had much action the last probably 45 minutes or so, maybe even an hour. But we're finally starting to get to the rising tide here. It's finally starting to move which makes me hopeful that uh, we might be able to find a few more fish.
to red. I think it's my first red of the day. So that's good, I suppose, that I haven't been catching more of them. Did you get the owl hooked? Oh no. Pretty guy. That tail's super blue. Another one? Another one. <laughs> Another little red. About the same size. Another very blue tail. Wow. Hit that right when it got down there. Okay, the current is flowing hard enough now. I decided to put on a half ounce sheep sticker pro jig from Bel Air Jigs. It's a link in the description that gets you 15% off to use my promo code. That was just a little one to saw him. Oh. I don't know how I got that one out. I don't think it's huge, but it's a pretty good one. Whew. Nice. Hopefully, this is a sign there's more fish to come. <laughs> well, the wind laid down and it got really nice out all of a sudden. It feels amazing. Uh, it's probably almost 70, sunny, and I would say <laughs> zero to five mile an hour winds. But oddly enough, as these types of things work out with fishing, the uh, bite was better when it was windy. I don't know what that was all about. And maybe I should have stuck with the slip float rig, I don't know. But the slip float rig worked really well. I was very happy with that. Got a few big ones off the bat, um, got a whole bunch of fish uh, in the beginning, and then stuff kind of slowed down for a while there around low tide, uh, slack tide, and then I got a couple more on the rising. Decided it's time to just go in now. Had a good morning. Don't want to spend too much time out here. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember to make some time for fishing. Bye.